We want to welcome our Nigerian viewers and viewers around the world. This is Business Week, where we offer you unique insights into the economies of the continent and, of course, all around the world. I am Kelly Egiga, and I'm reaching you from Lagos, Nigeria's commercial capital. You're welcome back. Thanks indeed for staying with us on the program. This is Business Week. Our focus today on the program is on the oil and gas sector as Nigeria remained or maintained its position as the largest oil producer here in the continent. But that conversation will take center stage in just a moment. Let's do you stories that made headlines last week. The Patients' Bill of Rights was launched in 2018 to ensure there are new standards of quality, equity and dignity in patients' healthcare experience in the country. The Bill of Rights is now being domesticated at the Federal Medical Center in Jabi on the request of the facilities managers. The implication of this is that the hospital has ratified the bill's provisions and would adhere to them in a discharge of its medical duties. I am truly inspired that the Federal Medical Center will publicly adopt, sign up, and display domesticating. The reason is that there is nothing that can be held against a man much more than your own words. Based on that, we are able to come up with a mission and vision for this institution. And using that mission and vision, we set up a strategic plan to achieve what we want to achieve. The Patient's Bill of Rights is seen as a bill of integrity that links the right to life and minimum standards of health care, which all Nigerians deserve. The exercise here is expected to drive this mandate at this federal medical center. And it's good that we, as a consumer protection regulator, and I, as someone who's extremely particular about medicine, patient care, facilities, and all of that, when I can say that what our country needs is scaling up what you're doing here. If a patient can come here and then we fail to discharge our duties, then it means we have failed. The federal government is doing its best to support us. And I can tell you that for the past three or four years, the capital budgets for federal tertiary health institutions have been released 100%. The Patient's Bill of Rights is focused on issues including access to patient-related information, fee-related information, confidentiality, quality care, access to emergency care, patient's dignity, visitation, patient's refusal of care, interruption of service by provider, and complaints generally. Well, glad to know you're there. Let's get into a big, big conversation. Nigeria sustained its position as the largest oil producer in Africa for two straight months as it pumped 1.235 million barrels per day in December. Well, that's according to data from the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. The latest monthly oil markets reports released by OPEC shows that Nigeria's oil output increased by 50,000 barrels per day based on direct communication. The report for December also revealed that um, Angola's oil production stood at 1.088 million barrels per day, while Algeria pumped 1.01 million barrels per day based on direct communication. Well, I discussed these feats for Nigeria and indeed the continent, as well as highlighted the challenges and prospects in the sector with my guest, who is very familiar with the oil and gas terrain here in Nigeria, the continent. He's the Managing Director and CEO of Kenyon International West Africa Limited, Dr. Victor Ekpeyong. Well, Dr. Ekpeyong is also an energy expert and entrepreneur. Here is that conversation. Dr. Victor Ekpeyong, entrepreneur, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Kenyon International West Africa Limited. Welcome to the program, and perhaps congratulations are in order for you on your honorary doctorate award. Thank you very much, Kelly. Thank you for having me in TUC. Yes, so uh, it's uh, a bit of a cheering news for us as uh, a country because Nigeria sustained its position 
as the largest oil producer here on the continent for two straight months. I wonder as an expert in Nigeria's oil and gas sector, what exactly would be your initial thoughts and assessment uh, of this report? Yeah, it is. It is. It is a great development, not just to Nigeria alone. For, for us I, in the industry, uh, last year has been terrible. Terrible. A lot of people lost their job because of the problem that was going on in, in oil and gas. Uh, a lot of companies shut down the operation. There was no production because if you produce, you can't even quit. So the, the, the shutdown of the, the pipelines and the oil types and everything, you know, create a lot of hardship for Nigeria. So it is it, 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 a thing of relief that the last quarter of last year, entering into, you know, 2023, we are hearing this news that um, Nigeria is, is ramping up production. Production is going up. We can do one point something million barrels per, per, in, in a day. And um, not just the good news, I also want to, you know, congratulate the Minister of Petroleum the Minister of State, you know, Petroleum, and the President for all the effort that they are, you know, put in place to see how to ramp up this production. And I also want to crave their indulgence. I want to plead with them to continue to engage the local community, those that are very close to this installation, those that are very close to this asset, for them to see how to, how to ramp up more production. Because we have the capacity to do up to 2.53 million barrels of oil per day. So let's see how we can get these uh, black coal go to the um, to those that need them, and let's see how we can convert them to the money we need in this country for us to push the country forward. So the reports for December also reveals that um, Angola's oil production, for instance, has, has stood at 1.088 million barrels uh, per day, while Algeria pumped about 1.01 million barrels per day. So, uh, so w w when you look at this this uh, uh, this production levels for both countries. Uh, I wonder what you make of um, our production here in the continent. As a continent, how would you describe our performance? For Africa, I would not really say Africa has really performed well when it comes to um, oil production because uh, why I'm saying so is that um, uh, Africa is known from centuries and ages to be a continent of raw materials. So uh, I, I, I would be more happier if uh, or the industry, in terms of oil industry, are able to change this narrative. Because we discovered that nearly all, almost 90, 80 to 90 percent of production in Africa is exported into Europe, America, and Asia. And Nigeria, the largest producer, two point something million barrels, still importing PMS, petroleum products. Angola, the second largest, is still importing, you know, petroleum product. And there are sometimes I wonder, okay, let's say Nigeria, okay, made a mistake, um, oil was discovered, a lot of uh, maybe pressures here and there. But what about some of these new, new, some of these countries that are just discovering oil recently? Why can't they learn from the other countries? Like I was in, in, in Ghana last year. Ghana, the population of 34 million, doing a production of one, one hundred and you know, some something barrels of oil per day, do not have a functional refinery. They are still importing petroleum products. In all these countries all over, the only country in Africa that I'm proud of when it comes to oil and gas is Algeria. Because Algeria, you know, population of 44 million people, and having five refineries that have a capacity to do 560, 540 to 60 barrels of oil per day. So, Origa, you know, Algeria produce about one point something million barrels per day. 50% of their, you know, production is being refined in their country. So, I'm not really proud of in Africa because I move around some countries that are producing, I'll discover that most of this country are exporting their raw material 100% and import the refined product. We're supposed not to be so. I think that is the only area I'm saying that Africa, we are not actually doing well when it comes to oil production. Uh, uh, we need to do better. Mm. Let's bring the conversation home because uh, only last month, for instance, the Minister of State uh, for Petroleum Resources, Mr. Timipre Silva, uh, has been quoted as saying that um, the country needs to improve 
security, surveillance along major crude oil pipelines, uh, in helping to shore up oil production and, and all of that. So talk to our viewers from that perspective and from that window, just how devastating is the issue of massive vandalism and crude oil theft. I know you're very particular about crude oil theft uh, and pipeline vandalism in, in the country. It's terrible, it's terrible, um, my brother, because uh, why I say it's terrible is that I happen to be, um, my company happened to be a company that are facing some of these things in, you know, in Naya Delta. They, um, two years, a, a year ago, there was a Nembe uh, spillage. Our company was there to see how to restore the environment. There is a lot that is going on. Our companies are also, you know, battling to see how to do this, to stop this menace that is going on in the Naya Delta. The, the Naya Delta water is polluted, the environment is polluted. Everything is, is in a mess. And not just being in a mess, it's also affecting our economy. We have what it takes to get what we want, but we can't get it the way how we want to get it. So it's, it's, it's a problem. But I want to say the federal government, through the leadership of the president and the minister of petroleum, minister of state of petroleum, they are doing their best to see how to tackle this. And that is why you see the production is a little bit, you know, ramping up to about 1.6, 1.3, 1.4 million barrels per day. Nigeria was down to below a million as of last year. True. So with their effort now, which I was uh, last year, the year before last, I was in some of these uh, TV stations, you know, trying to say Nigerian government should engage this host in these local communities because these are the people that are closer to the asset. These are people that will know when an intruder is coming. These are the people that will know what is going on there. Engage them. Let them be part of it. But I thank God today they have been able to engage one or two and we are seeing the result. So I will plead with them to, to still I do more. So. So, so you wonder if this uh, position of uh, being tagged the largest oil producer in the continent of being he been able to sustain that position the last uh, two months, November and December. You would perhaps give credit to uh, um, the decision by the federal government, even though it was really controversial. They received criticism to, to Tom Polo to, to, to man those, uh, those, those pipelines. Absolutely. I have to tell you, um, I, I think I was being in some couple of media, I think last year, year before last, trying to talk to uh, those that can hear that uh, what we need, the solution we need for oil and gas is to engage those communities, is to engage those that are closer to those assets. Because they live with them, they understand who is coming there, who is not going there. They know when a company, you know, you know, representatives is approaching the world, they know when it's an intro that is coming to the world. So I have to give credit to the government for in for that initiative. But I said they should do more because a lot of companies cannot evacuate. So they still need to work on some of those pipelines that have been you know, vandalized. And they still need to talk to most of these host communities to see how they can work to boost more production. We have the capacity to do more. And we cannot even meet our OPEX quota. We need to do more so that we can have resources, what it takes for us to run this country. Mm. And so, so, so despite uh, the feats, I mean, of being tagged the largest oil uh, producer country in the continent, long queues have remained. Petrol scarcity persists here in the country. Nigerians are biting really hard to, to buy fuel or petrol in, in many stations. Uh, Nigerians have been made or compelled to buy a liter of petrol as much as 250 naira, 300 naira, 350 naira as a case. Um, may be. I wonder what your thoughts and analysis are as, as regards to this situation. The fact that, I mean, we are being praised or commended or applauded for being the largest produ oil producer uh, country in the continent. Well, on the one hand, we have long queues spread all across the country. You know, presently in the world, there, are, there has been a lot of turbulence mm. all over the world, economic issues, invasion of road. Ukraine by Russia, some of the things that contributed to what service some people maybe going through all over the world. Um, in, uh, all, uh, PMS and some of the 
uh, you know, petrol products all over the world. A, I can tell it's very expensive now. It's even more expensive than this country, Nigeria. I think Nigeria is one of the countries that buy the cheapest when it comes to PMAs and some of those things, some of those petroleum products. If you travel to some, okay, let's bring back, uh, um, let's even talk about Middle East, Saudi Arabia, the largest oil producer all over the world. I think our uh, pump price is cheaper than in Saudi. Mm. But I, I don't want to go into that angle. I don't want to talk about that angle. But I want us as citizens to know that for us to be able to move this country forward, we need to support the government for two to deal with the relation. Mm. They have to remove that subsidy. Subsidy need to be taken out. How should government be borrowing money and be importing fear? And most of this fear, we burn them in traffic. It's like we borrow money to create jobs in other countries because our refineries are not working. And the money we borrow to create jobs in other country, we are burning and wasting those money on top of language and some other places you have traffic. So those money is supposed to be borrowed to invest in infrastructures, high-speed trains, and some of those things that is going to ease transportation, not to import fuel. So we should be talking about, we should be pushing the government to see how to get Portaco refinery, Wari refinery, or Wash River Cardona refinery working so that Wash River pump price, they are going to bring out, Nigeria will be able to buy. So it's terrible what we are seeing all over the world, all over the country, uh, some in, in some countries you have to pack your vehicles because you won't be able to fuel them. So it's terrible what, what is going on. But we need to talk to government. We need to cooperate with the government to see how to take this subsidy. This sector needs to be deregulated completely so that investors can come in. Also, about want to be refineries, can be refineries. You have the product, you refine your products, and, and you're selling your price and how, how you want to sell them. So that is the only way to get this problem solved. We are still going to have more queues and more queues and more queues until that this particular sector is completely and fully deregulated. I want to believe that you have perhaps visited some of the refineries as an oil expert. I wonder why exactly can't we get those refineries working? Uh, uh. Yeah, that is the question that you directly maybe put the Minister of Petroleum to know why. Uh, I think the government has been doing, trying to do their best, uh, pumping some money to see uh, some of these rehabilitation of some of those refineries and these and that. Like Portacol, Portacol I think is about 210 uh, million uh, barrels of oil capacity. If Portacol and Kaduna, Kaduna is about either 65 or so can come up, I think they will be able to uh, cushion the effect of what Nigerians are, are passing through. But I, I think and I believe that one of these days uh, we will have a government that will be very, very in, interested. You have the government that will be very, very peculiar or try to see how to make sure some of those refineries work because it's really going to cushion the effect of what Nigerians are passing. We are, Dr. Ekwayong, we are in a transitional phase. Um, we are less than 40 days to the 2023 presidential elections. I wonder perhaps as we round off our conversation, what your advice would be to the next chief executive officer of Nigeria's economy? Yeah, um, I would just talk about the Naira because the Naira is almost valueless as we, as we speak. Uh, we see uh, the inflation and we see uh, um, the exchange rate. So, and the only way for us to stop this problem is to buy Naira, buy from Nigerians, buy what we produce, try to see how we can stop most of this importation. What river we can produce, there is no need of buying them. So I would want to, uh, you know, talk about one or two or three industries which I think the new executive, uh, uh, um, we're going to hire or the Nigerian is going to hire to be the president the sector, I think you should focus on. Number one, uh, let's talk about um, manufacturing. 
we Nigerians uh, demand for forex for forex exchange is to import a lot of raw materials and how would you be able to manufacture when there is no power so the new chief executive need to focus on power generation from power generation to manufacturing manufacturing to raw materials Adjukuti still, the new executive need to look into it. I, I do, I, sometimes, it, I, when I look at the oil and gas industry, the oil and gas industry consumes a lot of steel. And all this steel from casing, from tubing, from platform, all those pipes is imported. And this is what we're supposed to have been getting from our steel plants here in this country. So we need to look into that. They need to look into automobile industry. We buy, we import anything from US. Scrap vehicle, we import them. And the vehicles that some you know users have already abandoned over there in the US, in, in Europe and some other countries, is finding its way into Nigeria. So how can we patronize local manufacturers or local assembly? Planned. And one of the things that make Nigeria to be stronger in the 80s or so was that a lot of things were done in country. Pij you know, Pijut has the assembling plant. So we need to see how to encourage these. Uh, these car manufacturers companies don't need to sell us completely assembled vehicles. They need to get their assembly plants in Nigeria and they need to assemble vehicles and we buy from them. Let's talk about textile. Nigerians are known to be very fashionable people. They buy clothes. Even what they need and what they don't need, they buy them. Can we look about some of these maribond industries, the textile industry in the north? How can we bring them back? Can we look at the, 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 the aluminum smelter company in Ecuador? We are building, we have a lot of need for aluminum. But that plan there is abandoned. So when we are able to harness some of these up, you know, potential, and we buy from ourselves, we'll be able to lessen our demand on foreign exchange. And before you know, we'll be able to grow an era. So those are the angle I think the new president should focus on. And as regards maybe in just uh, 120 seconds or less, what would, you, would be your advice uh, to, the, to the CEO about um, the oil and gas sector? That's a big, big decision for him to make when he assumes office somewhere in June, um, uh, where it's been projected that we put an end to the fuel subsidy regime. What exactly would be your advice to him as regards the oil and gas yeah, sector? Yeah, uh, in my sector, um, I would advise that um, there's going to be a lot of pressure in Europe, America, and for transition here yeah, we need to transition but how can we get what we have so that for us to convert them to the resources that we need for us to be able to acquire what we need like the rainbow energy so we need to invest in this industry guyana a small country in the caribbean it has a 10 years drilling plan some come some uh, Papua New you know, Papua New Guinea investing heavily in drilling. We need to invest in drilling hydrocarbon drill drilling oil and gas. We need gas to run our economy. We need oil to run our economy. So the new executive, the new president, need to look into the oil and gas and to see how to invest in an oil and gas so that it creates jobs and also will be able to boost our economy so that we'll have money for us to pursue transition. Entrepreneur, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Kenyon International, West Africa Limited, Dr. Victor Payon. Thank you indeed for your insights and perspective on the program. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. All right, there you go. That's exclusive chat with the Managing Director and CEO of Kenyon International, West Africa Limited, Dr. Victor Payon. Does it for us here on this edition 
of Business Week, but it's been such a wonderful journey this past few months, and thank you indeed for being such an important part of the program. I will see you again on the other side of things. I am Kelly Ejiga. Bye now.